Hello, everybody. Welcome to our episode of Ravenloft Misfits. I am Johnny. I am the DM. And for a list of the cast names, socials, and pronouns, check out the chat or the episode description. And we stream Ravenloft Misfits each Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, of course, excluding the last Monday-ish. But... We are here tonight with more Ravenloft Misfits since we have skipped so many. Please make sure to follow us, so subscribe to the channel, participate in chat, and if you're watching the recording, please like, comment, and share it with your friends. Join our Discord. Do all this stuff. We want to build a great community. And uh, yeah, if you're listening on the podcast, please consider rating the channel and leaving us a review on whatever podcast app you use. It helps with all the algorithm stuff and yada yada yada. So, we also want to thank Roll Twenty. That would that would be me. Sorry, I was. Like, <laughs> You're good. I'm, I'm listening to this to get the timing right for the for the fucking <laughs> commands. I forgot oh, it was. I me. love it. I love Sorry. it. Um, we would also like to take our time to thank to talk about our sponsors, supporters of our campaign. First Woo! of all, we would like to thank our main sponsor of the campaign, Roll20. If you're watching the stream and looking for a way to get together with friends online, Roll20 is a great way. Go check them out at roll20.net and check out the chat or episode description for a direct link. Woo -woo. I'll, do and, the, I'll do the commands later. <laughs> yeah, 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 it'll happen. Uh, we also <laughs> want to thank Sirenscape for allowing us to use their awesome music app. We have loved it ever since day one, and it has been amazing. So if you're interested in checking out Sirenscape, go ahead and check out the chat or the episode description. Um, yeah. Also, as you've probably noticed, we are missing two of our players, but the with the way that the last session story had taken a dramatic turn, uh, Ryan and Sabrina have decided to take a backseat for the campaign. However, you will be seeing them pop up every so often in the one shots of the month and other types of streams. So they will be around. They will Run, be but not forgotten. They will be they will be in our hearts in the always mist, lurking. Oh that's spooky. Waiting. One of them more literally than the other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh um. so with that out of the way, shall we get into a recap? I don't know if I can handle that again. Man, I don't know if we should. I don't think we Honestly. need a recap. I think we all remember vividly what happened well, last week. Well, I, I, too bad. Yeah, I think if anyone's going to do the recap, anyway. I think the DM should do the recap, honestly. <laughs> Let's hear it. Last episode <laughs> of The Bones of St. Andrew. As a vampire descended the stairs, Grim tried to pull a fast one and act as though you were there to pick out a coffin for a friend, but the ruse didn't hold up as the vampire looked to the terrified Henrik and outed you. Who outed you, sorry. <clears throat> a giant battle ended with the result in the death of many. Ismark was the first to go. He sacrificed himself so that Irina could run, and Grim sacrificed himself so that Johans could run from the, what we termed it as, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blair, who died, came back as that were Blair, the demonic werewolf type of monster, and having no control of her actions, only wanting destruction, began to terrorize both the party, mainly Grim, and the rest of Barovia, Valakai. So, as Ware Blair terrorized the stockyard, Johans, you ran to the church, and Katya, you were unconscious. Irina, since you had run all the way to the church before everyone else, you came to find Strahd holding Father Lucian's neck, keeping him hostage in exchange for the bones that you had just gotten. He claimed that he could help bring your brother back something that you were not yet aware of. However, you quickly learned that the hostage was more of a courtesy than a real threat, 
as he broke his neck with no remorse, and then approached you, charmed you, and you willingly gave those bones to him. Willingly. <sighs> Johans finally arrived at the church just in time to see Strahd casting Disintegrate on the bones, creating dust in his hands that fell to the ground before he disappeared completely. However, the story will continue after we shift to Katya. Mm. So. <clears throat> Change it up. Let's see. We'll do that one. Why not? Okay. Katya. Yeah. The world surrounding you is blurred and screams and bells are muffled. You see bodies surrounding you and people frantically running throughout this stockyard. Let's change it to a different thing, actually. Now that I'm now that I'm in this uh, this ambiance, <laughs> this is not the right one. Let's see. We're gonna do yeah, that the one. Strahd creates. The vampires are dead, so they the aren't there. Strahd. So the world surrounding you, the it is blurred and screams and bells are muffled. You see bodies surrounding you and people frantically running throughout the stockyard, running from someone or something. Though you're dazed, you look around trying to find the source of this terror until you see this large creature. It's swiping at people, biting into them, flames erupting from the cracks in its body. Looks similar to a werewolf that you had faced before, but larger and demonic with wrapping around horns and skeletal wings that outstretch tens of feet. <laughs> it swipes and claws at these innocent people and with every drop of blood, the flame seems to grow larger and larger. And you see a group of guards finally rushing towards this creature with spears in hand. Most of them are thrown away like ragdolls by giant arms of this creature. And you see the danger that these people are in and you try to stand and fight but as you get even an inch off of the ground, you fall back down. You turn, lying on your back, bringing your hand to your face to find it completely covered in blood. You suddenly remember the battle that had just transpired, and you begin looking around to find the dead bodies of vampires that had died by your hands and your friends, and then to your left, you see the severed body of your friend, Grim, lying mm -hmm. on the ground, in a pool of his own blood. Then you hear the unnatural Fuck. screech from this giant creature. You turn to look and find a bright light erupting. And you look away for a moment, and when you look back, you squint to see Rictavio. He's holding some sort of symbol in his hand, and he's holding his hand out, his hand glowing with bright white light as he walks towards this giant creature. You see this creature breathing out this large tuft of fire as Rictavio dodges out of the way nimbly and continues marching forward, muttering something under his breath. Everything is muffled, so it's difficult to hear. The creature screeches again and begins backing away as it outreaches its wings and begins flapping them until it finally leaps over the town's gates and out of view. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then you black out once more. Well, at least I didn't die. Now. Well, I gave, Here. I gave Rictavio a bad rap, but... Thanks for that. <laughs> okay, let's see. What are we going to play now? We're going to do that one. So. As you black out, you see a group of guard, or sorry, nope, not that one. Not that text. <laughs> Your eyes then open again. You find yourself back in a similar dream as before. You sit 
in the hut you had inhabited for years. Your stomach aches as you sit on the edge of your stone bed with tattered blankets. Then you see the door open just as before. However, this time, you see your mother entering, holding a young boy just next to her. She enters your hut, and you sit there, staring. And she stands there, looking directly at you, and says, Katya, you haven't drank the blood of a living yet, have you? <laughs> she pushes the young one towards you. Why would I... Why would I do that? I know you have our hunger. Why do you hold back? Come. Drink, my child. I would never be like you. You are more like me than you know. As the, the child comes closer to you, you can hear the heart beating. You can see the veins pulsing in his neck. I need you to do a charisma saving throw. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> yeah. Seven. You look, and it's like something takes over. Without a second thought, you become the monster that you're so afraid of yet again. You look back up towards this boy and lurch toward him with lightning speed, biting into his neck and begin to drink. He flails around trying to get you away from him, but you continue to drink and drink and drink until he slowly stops resisting. You hear your mother, yes. The blood of the young and the innocent is so sweet. It doesn't carry the same burdens as the old and broken have. It is unpolluted by the trials of the world. Wouldn't you agree? Go ahead and do another charisma saving throw. Oh my god. <laughs> Ten. Unfazed by her words, you continue to drink every bit of life from this body until he goes completely limp in your hands. You push yourself away, finally realizing what you've just done. And you look to your mother, and she looks down at you with endearing eyes, taking her hand onto your cheek. My child, Katya. Why are you, why are you at war with yourself? I'm gonna swatter back away and like scurry off to the back of the the bed and just like curl up in the corner. This is how the world works. You must accept yourself. Free yourself from the trials and tribulations of mortality. I can show you the true secrets of becoming a vampire. If only you ask. And for a split her. second, <laughs> for a split second, you see Morgantha there. Old Granny. It switches form and then back to her. Almost like as if you have like this vision, just But there she stands, your mother. I'm just like curling up. I'm not listening at all. I Keep my hands over my ears. I'm just like rocking back and forth, trying to ignore her and wait. You start for it rocking to go away. back and forth. You're you're looking away, averting your gaze until you close your eyes, and then the rocking from your body is then changed to real when you're woken by Rictavio shaking you awake, and you look to find Rictavio accompanied by Frederick, looking concerned, saying, "Rictavio looks over you and says, you 'You're right, mate.'" I straight up just like scurry, I freak out and I like back mm -hmm. up and I'm like, get the. Oh, oh, all right, all right. Frederick, give him, give us some space. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. I didn't realize it was you. I'm so It's his quarter. I'm right. sorry. 
you're looking quite pale there. Something, something bad must have happened. It was, uh, it was a bad night. Looks like it. And you see Frederick looking around. <sighs> what the fuck happened here? Some... We... It looks like... Some were... creature attacked the town and then it brought all of these vampires and... I don't know what that creature was. I don't know where it came from. The last I saw, there were vampires in the coffin store. We brought them outside. We were about to take them out when I fell. And I woke up and I just like... I look over at Grim and I'm just like... And... Everything has gone wrong. I don't know what's happened. I, 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 I don't know what's happened either. I, I, all I, seen? I just heard Johans in my head at one point, and from then on, I, I don't thank know. You. Well, thank you for coming. Have you seen him? Have you seen anyone else? I saw Johans running by. At one moment, but... Uh, it must... They must be at the church. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah it looked like... I, I briefly saw a, the one with the red hair running yeah, by, too, but... Arena. Okay. They're okay. Um, I, like, crawl over to... To Grim, and I, like, check for signs of life. Yeah, go I ahead and do a medicine check. in the first place, but I'm gonna check anyway. Sure. Um... We... Eleven... Okay, there we go. Now we're showing it. Okay, cool. The uh, stream didn't see our rolls, so mm, I just want to make sure that we're good. Okay. Oh, looks like something's up. Anyways. Okay, so you got an 11. He looks... He looks dead. More than before. Got it. More than before. <laughs> just, oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, oh no. Uh, like, look around. Do I do I see any of my other friends anywhere out here? Doing a perception check. Uh, go ahead and see if you can find any other ones that may be here. 16. 16. sure that everything's good okay cool might have to do a quick reset on my end hold on one sec just need to reset something real quick technical Mystery. difficulties happens shout out to roll 20 for helping bring our nightmares to life <laughs> <laughs> Letting us act out our traumas. Okay. Yeah. Nothing like mommy issues and friends' deaths to bring people into the exciting, happy world of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. We're just we're just trauma bonding, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You too can play D and D and trauma bond with your friends. <laughs> I'm stealing Johans for a second to do a few checks just to make sure that everything looks good. Okay. I was like, you're what with him? <laughs> you are doing what to me? How? There we handling go. some cool. and handling You're handling some animals. Some animals. I, I just, yeah, just looks like we're good. Okay. My awesome. actual mother is in chat right now. So hi well, mom. Hello. I love you. Hi. Hello. The the mom hate that's happening in stream has nothing to do with you. It's a much Don't worse mom, personally. I promise. <laughs> so if it's even your real mom. Uh. You pat you did a 16 perception check. Um yeah. <clears throat> one of the one of the first things that Though you you look around and one of the first things you do see is not your friends, but Henrik hiding still in his coffin shop. You have a direct sight as at him just underneath the table. Mm -hmm. Um, I just like I can barely sit up, so I just like turn it from like there's that poor coffin maker man is too afraid to leave. You should be careful in there. I don't know how many are still around. I don't know what's Wait. happened. Wait, what happened with him? He was being held hostage by the vampires. I tried to get him out, but he was being difficult. I would... 
I would just go check on him, but I don't know if there are still monsters in there. I would be careful. Uh, he was I, being held captive by these. Yes, he was. He was afraid to talk to us, and we, well, we pushed the issue, and this is what happened. But I think, is there like? I guess with my perception, do I, like, hear anybody moving around or any other vampires running around? Okay, no. so, like, I, I think the situation... You see people running around, like, yeah, but oh I don't, my god, there was a big-ass monster that was attacking like, I don't everything, but see other any other, that, like, immediate danger or anything. Not at the moment. Okay, so I just... So, like, Frederick, Frederick says, you, you stay here, I'll go talk to him. Um, I think the rest of the, I think the danger's past, at least I hope, but... Just stay on your guard. Of course. And he takes his spear and he slowly begins making his way into the coffin shop. Meanwhile, Ortavio is still there. He's kind of looking towards his his wagon and then he looks back over to... <sighs> As Frederick gets a little further away, he looks at you and he says... <clears throat> there are some things that we need to talk about. But first thing is, uh, are you one of them? And he points over to the, to the vampires <laughs> on the ground. I like, yeah, yes, I guess there's no point in hiding it. How long did you know? While you were unconscious, I checked your teeth. Mm, it didn't show okay. the adverse effects by holy water. Yeah, okay. This at least I leads it, me okay. to believe that you are not yet fully a vampire. But I've, you are not completely human. No, I've been dealing with the effects recently. It's been getting stronger, but I've been trying to control myself. How long myself. have you had this condition? Uh, less uh, a week or two. It was recent. Um, I, uh, I must thank you. I saw... What you did with that monster, and I appreciate ah, your that help. That was nothing. And I apologize for being rude to you before. It's no big deal. I understand. Um, Listen, your friends look like they ran past the... Yes, they're, the, they're probably uh, at the church. Uh, I should in, go meet them. You need friend help with your friend's body. Yes. Ah. Going to leave Valakai. It seems yeah. that this place is becoming more dangerous. By the that's second. how I. That's how I see it too. I think. I think it would be best for us to get on the road. Um, I can. I can bring you to the church if you want. I like. Sit. I like struggle and like sit up and I'm just like I should I'll be okay I can make it I just I'll be alright I'll like pick up my my sword and shield and like go over to Grim's body and try to like pick him up this is perhaps selfish of Zach but do I see Blair's halberd yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pick that up too. All of all of Blair's belongings are there now. Like she turned into this monster, like hulked out. Everything mm -hmm. is left there. Okay. Um, I'm like I like noticed that. I don't know that I would like, but I'm just gonna grab her halberd and like as much of her stuff as I can carry. Okay. And then like shoulder. Rim. Rim is in two pieces. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go and like... Huh, alright. I put stuff down. I'm gonna go into the coffin shop and like drag out a coffin. Okay. And As like... you do, you see at the very top of the stairs splayed out body of Ismark. Oh my god, no. Not him too. And Frederick looks over as he's, like, kind of talking to Henrik, who is just terrified and just sitting, like, 
like those yeah. victims after like big you know events that have like those those blankets mm-hmm. over he's basically just sitting down in this yeah, chair yeah. completely just so, in yeah. shock and so frederick takes a moment looks over towards you and says what happened we we killed the vampires we you did, did all we... of this at great cost yes we did and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take, like, as long as it takes, like, a half, half hour, hour, whatever, and I'm gonna, like, drag two coffins out into the yard, put Grim and Ismark's body in there, shut them, and I'm just gonna leave them there, we'll come back, sure. and then I'm gonna gather up Blair's stuff and head over to the church. Uh, Rictavio and Frederick take you, or help you out, it's really quick, Yeah. Um, with the help of them, and you place the bodies in there, and as you're placing that the bodies in the coffins. Rectavius says, "Well, uh, I can uh, put them them coffins on uh, my carnival wagon. I'm heading over there right now, anyways. So we just place it right on top, and I'll give you a lift. If, if you don't mind, I would appreciate that. Thank you. I don't mind one bit. Uh, so I'm like." Again, with I the was help already of, like starting to like trudge off yeah. toward the church, just and I'm like, just like, I imagine uh, like inch by inch, just yeah, and then I just slowly. like stop, and then I'm like about to keep going. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it, okay, I'll get on the cart, and I just like sit on the one of the like steps. Do and perception him... check. Okay. Uh, where did perception go? Bam. 13. It's not very hard to see. When you get on there and you put, you place the two coffins on. Mm. And as you're coming down, you see a little grate. And you see this giant figure in there moving around. And you hear this low. (laughs) It's hard to see exactly because it's so dark outside. Or not dark Mm. outside, but like. Dusk, not dusk. What's the word? It's like, it's Barovia. It's, it's fucking yeah, dark. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just fucking three p.m. and it's For sure. almost yeah, midnight, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. So um, it's like yeah. it, you could see so this figure moving see. around. I don't. Oh, you have dark vision, don't you? I do. Yeah. So then you it's see an owlbear. <laughs> you see, not an owlbear. Oh. You see a shimmer from outside of that grate, on plates of armor. And not only that. You see, as it turns, you see two cat eyes looking directly at you and giant teeth coming down like tusks. This is a saber-toothed tiger that is armored in the back of this carnival wagon. I... And Rictavio, as, as you look inside and see that, Rictavio comes up to you and he says, That is... Uh, going to be a secret between you and me yes i like don't even react to it i just like i'm so you know knocked out i like put him down look at there and i look over him i just go yeah good and so he goes and he takes his seat as frederick (laughs) finally finished putting up the other coffin he's all right i will deal with henrik uh I guess I will tell the Burgomaster what the fuck happened today. Please, just... uh... I will make sure that you get uh, accolades for taking down all of these (laughs) pieces of shit. They are... They are where they belong. Thank you. Of course. Um, We'll... Hopefully you can get some rest. with the aftermath later. I, uh... I appreciate you. Thank you. And I, like... Of course. Just slump down and yeah. just tell your <laughs> men to right be under careful. the sea. Yeah, of course. Uh, and you see a few guards coming and investigating what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. Frederick starts telling people to do stuff, but you be you lurch forward on this carnival wagon with the with I the grabbed. mysterious Rictavio now. Yeah, and never mind. What's up? Like, Oh, I just, like, all of their stuff would be in, in the coffin, too. 
mm -hmm. all of Ismark's and and Grim stuff. And I imagine right. I would have grabbed that shield that they gave him. Sure. And so I'm just like, I have the halberd and the shield just like in my lap mm -hmm. while we're riding. And through Balakai you go, going down the main road, you see that people are talking and looking as this carnival wagon is going by. You see people just confused as to why the bells were ringing and nothing was happening, at least for them. But you also see people smiles on their faces from ear to ear. As if trying to put up that front. But you continue until you come to the Blue Water Inn. And you see the Mardikovs, as well as a few of their patrons, just outside doing the exact same thing. And as Rictavio comes closer, they look very confused, and he just gives a little signal, and he looks to you, Katya. They, they both look to you if you want to say anything, unless you are... Cool. I just don't even cool. react. Just... You are just in your own zone. Yeah. And finally, after a few minutes of travel, you come to St. Andrew's Church. However, before we get there, Irina and Johans, you finally see the bones. You see the bones in Strahd's hands just before he disintegrates them and disappears. And you are left in this lonely church with only your thoughts. One second. The charm from Strahd slowly wears off of you, Irina. The wind from the outside entering the church gives you chills from both the cold and awful, also the realization of the awful events that had just transpired. Yeah, I feel like she just she just falls to the ground, like, kind of everything that they just went through. Um, you know, she just ran so far, like, with every last energy she had to get here. And um, she now feels also responsible for um, the death that just happened in front of her. And, um, and Johans, like, very you see... Very helpless and vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> the body of Father Lucian on the ground at the end of the chapel. Johans is just staring at the corpse. Just pale. Just <laughs> just s still, stiff, uh, unmoving. He's, he watches for, his, he's processing really quickly in his mm -hmm. mind. And then the, the dissociation kicks in and he rushes forward. Arina, we have to go. And I, he grabs her by the hand and tries to, like, not like forcibly pull her, but like just kind of lead her out the door. Yeah, sure. She, she takes his hand and she kind of like looks up at Johans with like freaking like tears, like being held back in her eyes, like just like staring up at him, like an expression of just like defeat, basically like extreme defeat. And um, uh, she looks up at him and um, Johans. Um, I, I, I did this, this is all my fault, the, the, the father, the, the bones, they're gone, and Strahd, he was here, and everything, it, um, Johans is gonna, is she, she's, like, I'm assuming, like, on her knees, so you said his height? Yeah, she's like he's, down, she's he's, like on her knees. Like she probably has like one at her hand in his, but like yeah. He's going to let go and just cup her head and look her in the eyes. And I'm going to cast Um Johans' warm embrace. Oh 
You begin um, to feel like he has a warm the cold, spell. Like the cold that came from outside mm-hmm. is taken out of your body. And you see a little bit of ice forming on Johans's hands as if he is taking the cold from you and mm-hmm. what's left is just warmth. And you feel like a warm hug. Mm-hmm. And as he does that, he's going to say, he's going to pay for everything he's done. But if we let him get to us, he wins. I know it's hard, but right now we have to move quickly and with determination. I need you here in the present. And I need you to understand that I am going to be by your side until his head rolls or until there will be no more Barovia to fight against him. You're right. Thank you. It is and not your fault. It is no one's fault. It is his fault and he's going to pay. That's... That's a better thing to say, yes. Come on, we have to go. She, like, puts her hands over his and, like, gives him a squeeze on the hands and, like, tries tries to smile. It's like a, it's like a kind of a weak smile, like, you know, and and gets up um, slowly. Uh, he's and... he's going to make sure that he's still holding your hand mm-hmm. so you continue to feel the warmth of the spell. Okay. Yeah, so. she 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 hold she holds your hand like she's probably like she's probably clutching it pretty tightly because she's like going through it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, as you're about to leave from below one of the back pews, you see movement, and then you see this young boy, the altar boy, Yeska, coming out looking carefully around and then seeing the two of you. He begins leaving the pew. Is he he here? Is he gone? Yes, go. I, uh, is he gone? He, he's, he's gone. Um, do do you, do you have a place to stay? Well, I'm, I'm, I, and he points over to a doorway that's across the hall. Or across the chapel. And you see the door is actually open. And you see a little bit of candlelight flickering from inside. Uh, that's the way I'd Father Lucian and I sleep. And you see him kind of looking in there. Um, you should come with us. What is Father Lucian? This, yes, come, come with us. Do perception, or not perception, persuasion. Okay, let's see what we got here. Persuasion. 19. Okay. So, the boy that is just barely under eyesight of the pews, as he's kind of crouching down and afraid, still hasn't seemed to seen or to see Father Lucian. And so mm-hmm. he comes to you and, okay. Come with us. And she, like, as soon as he gets out, she sure. goes to kind of, like, Which is gently, easy like, hold on to him and, like, pulls him close to her to, like, with prevent him from trying to all of the danger him. that <laughs> happened and the urgency that you're pushing him along with, he doesn't yeah. seem to think anything of it, and he yeah. continues out without seeing Father Lucian. Once so, we're outside, I'm going to close the sure the door, the front doors. Easy enough. You close them, and the church is now closed. You find yourselves right back outside of the church. Where's everybody else? Where's, um... Where's... Where's Ismark? Where's Katya? Where's... Blair, where's um, Grim? They're, they're not with you?
they are gone. They're they're gone. Oh, oh, all of all all of them. I think so. Everybody, <laughs> vampires are dead, but they, we weren't without casualties. It's if everyone is gone, Johan. Everyone is gone. As far as I'm aware, yes. It is Mark well, too. Hilarious. Yes. He's he's gone. Yes. He 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 told me to run, so I ran. I should have stayed. No. He should have run too. I should have stayed. I could have helped you all. I I never listened to him, and the one time I listened to him, this happened. We need to keep moving, Marina. Okay. Okay. I know. I, I know. It's it's not safe here. It's not. No worse. She like whispers to him. Um. No worse. No worse safe. No worse safe. But. His his head is going to roll. We're we're going to make it safe here. We are. It's, it's gonna be safe, and that the sun is going to shine again in Barovia, and and I I'm not going to stop trying, even if it means that I have to die trying. You can't get away with this. I agree. We begin to see carnival wagon coming down and you see the emotionless Katya and from here you're able to see two coffins on the top of the carnival wagon until finally the horse stops and the wagon comes to a complete stop just in front of the church and you see Rictavio driving, or yeah, writing, whatever. And he doesn't say anything. As if I, I'll hop off and walk up and uh, just say, I, I'm so sorry, Arena. It should have been me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, you're muted, Momo. You're muted. Oh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my line. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she's still, she's holding Johan's hand in, in one hand. She's, she's probably like, like grip, she, she's breaking her hand at this point, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sure. I'm, I'm sorry, Johan's, but she's, she's, you know, um, she kind of lets go of, of Yeska and she, uh, places, um, a hand on, um, on, on Katya's kind of cheek, kind of like feeling you like, and then your shoulder and, yeah, you're you're okay. Um, you're okay. Mm. Maybe the others others they're okay too. They're... Um, Johan's Katya's here. I, I'm 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 okay. But he, I didn't see Blair, and I like hold up the halberd, and I'm like I don't know where she is, but the others are. I'm so sorry, Ariana. It should have. And it, I just like look up at the coffins. Yeah. You see Rictavio is just kind of standing on the carnival wagon, just waiting for whenever you guys are ready to help out with the coffins. That's... Uh, that's... So there is... Maybe she ran away to safety, too. And she did not. She... Did you see her? Do you know what happened to her? She fell and turned into some hellhound-esque monster. There was fire and brimstone that and thing wings. was Blair. You saw it. 
You see Just Rattavio kind of stand up a little bit. She turned into to a monster? How is that thing? No, that couldn't be Blair. I saw it with my own eyes. She t- She's the one who <sighs> took oh down my. Grim. Oh, God. Well... I guess we'll... I guess we'll deal with that later. One thing at a time. Hmm. We should, um... We should put them down. I'll like go over to start helping Rectavio with, with the coffins. And as you do, he says, Did I heal that right? Did she say? Or did, did Johan say that? It that, sounds like that, was, that monster was there. I don't know it's how that's possible. Whispered. But, so, Johan, yeah. go ahead and do a perception check. I saw you. <laughs> oh, like, that was hmm? me offended because he <laughs> called me a she. Well, I mean, he, he was talking. I mixed pronouns with Blair and you, okay? Anyways. <laughs> it's like. Um, what he says, it sounds like that monster was Blair. I don't know how that's possible, but... Interesting. So this is very interesting. Well, and he begins helping you take down, down the coffins. I suppose it would be too much to ask for two graves that are already dug, right? Fortunately, they are not <laughs> already dug. All right. Yeah. Hey, I'm uh, going to start... I'm going to start ritual casting on Seed Servant. Sure. I'm going to start digging. Actually, you know what? Do I... I don't have it prepared. Never mind. Well, I mean, by the time that it takes for you to bring the coffins to these graves, you have casted Unseen Servant. I'll have Jeff help everything. Sure. Bring the coffins of your loved ones to... Their potential graves just outside well, of happening. the church. Johans isn't gonna go immediately to the graveyard. He's when he when he finishes casting the spell and everybody's busy, he's just going to bury his ha- his head in his hands and just start crying. Sure. Luna, <laughs> who had come to Rictavio, now appearing just next to you, nuzzles just under your arm, and you give a great big hug. The tears that fall from your face turn to small icicles Hmm. that go down her feathers and then disappear. The rain picks up, falling to your clothes, feeling even heavier than it's ever felt, just from the sheer grief of losing such important people. And soon the graves are done. And do you want to see Ismark or Grim at all before you lay them down? Yeah, Irina, um, she kind of, there's two coffins. I'm sure they're like identical. So yeah. um, she would turn to uh, Katya. Um, Katya, which one is Ismark? You point to the right one that's its mark. Okay, cool. Because I was going to say I don't know because I yeah. don't know how I would keep track of that shit, but <laughs> it's fine. Um, she yeah. goes to, to start to open it. You open it and you find its mark. Bloody. It is a... It is hard to look at. But one of the things that you do see, his jacket is splayed down to the side and you can see just inside of one of the pockets a small parchment. Mm -hmm. So you kind of like looking over, like looking at him, um, notices that and kind of takes the parchment out and, um, what what is this the one time I listened to you 
this happens to you? And what is this parchment? She pulls it out and opens it. Inside, you find this very bloody letter, yet all of the ink is still very present. It says, My beloved sister Irina, if you are reading this, you are either snooping around in my things while I am asleep, or I have passed. Regardless, I sit here remembering the time that you and I came down to the Ivlis River to fish. Do you remember the wolf that just stood there? We thought for sure we were doomed and that caught us by surprise, but it just stood there, staring, until it finally left. No harm came to you or me, and Father didn't even believe us when we told him. I've thought about that moment a lot in recent days. All of this work, all of this danger, risk, and death we've experienced must not be in vain. Our father's death must not be in vain. If I am dead, you must carry on. I don't think I've ever experienced hope, but with these people, I, th I think I do. If what Madame Eva said is true, then help these folks achieve their goals and bring an end to this evil monster. You were always better than me at almost everything. At first I hated it, but... Then I came to realize that you were truly something special. You must do better than me and stay alive for the Kolyanovich family. The loving brother, Ismark. She holds it back up <laughs> and wipes her tears. Damn, bro, why you gotta do us like that? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of um, tucks it away in her own um, pocket and she kind of looks down at him and like she kind of like moves his hair like out of his face and tries to wipe any blood from his face and sure. looks at him and I'm, I'm, I'm going to fix this, um, we're, <laughs> we're going to fix this, and the sun is going to shine on Barovia once again, and I wanted you to be here with us to see it, but I know that you will see it, even if it's not standing by our sides. <laughs> I shouldn't have left your side, and... <laughs> I will avenge you and everyone else that he's taken from me. But I will never forget you. You were the best brother anybody could have ever asked for. And you would have been the best burgomaster of Borovia. I know it. And she kind of like rests a hand on his chest and just like, yeah, yeah. says her goodbyes to her brother. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I thought we would cry about fantasy world, huh? <laughs> Damn it, Johnny. How dare you? <laughs> Damn it, Johnny. <laughs> so, as these my bodies... fantasy brother. <laughs> god. What a way for him to go out too. <laughs> <laughs> what a hero! Well, once the once the graves are dug, Jeff is going to go fetch. <sighs> sure. You feel a slight tap on your shoulder, and Luna looks up as well as you to see nothing. But you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's Jeff. I yeah. grab his hand, and he walks me to, to the graveyard. And I'm just holding Luna in one hand and holding Jeff's hand in another. Mm -hmm. I'm just is Jeff invisible? To... Jeff yeah. is an unseen, unseen servant. Unseen so yeah. servant oh, yeah, that's right. The only reason why we servant. saw them last time was because they were holding a skeleton. It is yeah. raining, so I guess the like is, that's that is sure. Sure. Some, that's kind of that's a cool. That's a cool. I love that idea. <laughs> I love that idea. That like rain is just on the top 
parts of the body and just yeah, so like you can kind of see a silhouette off. Yeah. of a guy walking I, around. I, That's fucking you see, spooky. You see that this this thing this is halfling sized. That's true. So, oh, I guess this would be down here then. Um, so while Irina's having a moment with her brother, I go over to Grim's coffin. And I should say that I did pile everyone's stuff into their coffins with them. So I'm going to take anything Grim had, which sounds like grave robbing, but I promise it's just practical. I um, guarantee that any of them would have told you to had, do it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he had much. The but I'm bag gonna, of I'm holding gonna, was given to Irina, so I know yeah. that's not in there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she has the bag of holding. Yeah. She didn't, he didn't have they're, much. Yeah, they're really, think. they're really, you just do just see a, a book. On well, his so person. I'm gonna arrange his body into Right. The, of course. The I imagine orientation. Of course. And then yes. I'm gonna set the the shield on his chest and then put the book over that and kind of like put his hands on the book over the shield. Okay. And then I'm gonna just leave him like that and just kind of look down and just have a quiet moment looking sure. at him. Johans, you finally arrive. And you see the open caskets for both Grim and Ismark. <clears throat> I'm gonna reach into my vest and I'm gonna pull out the paper of recommendation that he that Ismark wrote. Okay. And I'm gonna what what Kanja just did to Grim with the book is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna you know, give uh, Ismark a more like I don't dignified know how to position. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give him the book. Clean him up. Kinda. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. put my hand on his shoulder and I'm gonna whisper. Thank you for everything. I will take care of her, even if it kills me. Then I'm going to just stand by. Okay. Just like so. Mm. Rectavio, seeing that everybody is in extreme despair, comes and he takes the hint, placing the lids onto the coffins. And At that point, I would help him lower you begin into the helping him lower these coffins into the two graves that have been dug. And Rectavio begins digging in dirt. I would help with that too. Yeah, Irene is gonna help with that. She's sure. no stranger to this, as she Jeff. recently also buried her father. Oh, true. Jeff would yep. also help. Sure. Because Johans doesn't have the capacity to not cry and move at the same time. Sure. So. Fair. So, after a few more minutes, they are both laid to rest. At the end of the funeral, Rictavio comes to each of you and says, This isn't the time for faking myself in front of you, but I'm not going to mince my words. I saw what you did there. Killing six vampires spawn is not an easy feat. If there was ever a doubt in my mind the, whether you were against Throd, there isn't now. I am going to leave Valakai. I can see that this place is going is a powder keg with a lit fuse. I'm going to be leaving now. When you are all well rested and finally leave Valakai, come to my tower. Your, your tower? Yes, tower. I have taken the tower that is on Lake Baratok. You will see mm. signs leading to it. When you leave, <laughs> yeah, I will explain everything when you come to my tower. As I said, follow the signs to Lake Baratok. Follow them, take that road, that will give you valuable insight into the enemy. But for now, take your time, rest, 
and I will see you when you get there. He nods. He leaves. Getting she back gives on his him carnival a hug way. before he leaves. As he's leaving, you grab his shoulder and he turns and he gives you a, gives hug. Him a hug. And she you. whispers to him, Thank you so much. Of course. I'm sorry that I was not there to help. I'm sorry to see your brother. I'm sorry. Um, Jeff is going to join in the hug. <laughs> he <Angel> just <laughs> instead. Sure. He like looks <laughs> to see nothing there, but then looks over towards you and kind of fucking spooky puts two and two together. Ghost. <laughs> and he releases and he begins making his way back over towards the carnival wagon where it lurches forward and begins making its way towards the gates of Valakai where you see him disappear beyond. I think he's right. I think the only way to make this place safe is to cut it off at the head. We have to get out of here and start making moves. I do. And it, it, it seems that at least there's um, there's other people here. Other people who are strong who have been able to hide and, and, and endure and maybe we can find other people to join us so we are not doing this alone um, and we will we will take him out um, we will make everything right again we will we will make this right do what we have to we Oh, I like she like falters for a second. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think we should just take a night's rest, get some supplies in the morning, and and head out as yes. fast as possible. Okay. Um, we should. We need to take Yaska to mm -hmm. to the orphanage. Right. Yes, Yaska. Yes. He's just, he's standing just next to you. He's been next to you this whole time. Minus the time when you went towards Ismark, he kind of yeah. gathered that he shouldn't be there, but he's just next to you. Looks up. Jessica, where, where are your your parents? <laughs> oh, I, I don't, I never had, my, my parents died a That's, long time ago. Okay. Okay, um. My my parents they 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 have also passed away, and um, everything is going to be okay. We um, the church is not safe anymore, so you mm -hmm. can't stay Why? there any longer. Wait, so <sighs> we we are going to find you a place to stay that. You'll be taken care of. Um, you you know Milovage. Yes, but so Milovage will be there. So you 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 will have a friend, and there's also some other really nice kids there, who 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 Johans brought. They're very very smart kids, very nice, and um. But you cannot go to the church anymore because it is not safe. Do you understand? Do persuasion check. Eleven. He just looks at you and he says, Is it? Is it because of the bad guy? Yes, it is so because of... The, the one they all talk about? Yes, but... Okay. It's Father it's, Lucian at the, at the orphanage. He's... She kind of, like, leans down in front of him, like... Mm -hmm. he is, he's small. He's a small... Yeah, uh, very small. Yeah. So she kind of leans down to be, like, at his level, and... 
Vieska. Um, Father Lucian is not with us anymore because the bad man took him from us and she gives him a hug. But it's going to be okay. You're going to be taken care of and we are going to take care of the bad man and he's not going to hurt you and you will be safe here but you you need to go to live at the orphanage with Milavash and the other children we can we will make sure you're taken care of what he just goes silent he's trying to process what's happening Katya like slumps even more hearing this yeah. and she's just like you didn't, the bones didn't uh, work out did they and he he took he took the bones he he was here I was not strong enough I was not strong enough and he forced it's... me to give the bones to him and he turned them to ash right before my eyes and I was powerless and I couldn't stop him I'm and so sorry he said that he said that he would bring my brother back and I I, I didn't know that he was gone I thought he was bluffing. I I thought you were all just behind me and I I knew that even if I handed it to him, this wouldn't be the end. I knew that he, even if he spared Father Lucian that he would not stop here. And so I tried to do what I could to to keep the bones from him so that we could make this place safe again. But I wasn't strong enough and I'm sorry. You did the best you could. It's not your fault. I'm sorry. We should have been here to help you. Bismarck should have been here instead. I should have stayed. But it doesn't matter what we should have done. It only matters what we're going to do. You're right. <laughs> He's taken too much from us. No more. He'll pay for his crimes. It's our turn to take from him. And I'm going to take everything from him. I'm going to make him suffer. I'm going to make him feel unbearable pain. Like he's done to everybody else for years. And so long. I am not only going to kill him. He's going to suffer. I will see to it. Oh. I promise that. You all begin to wrap everything up here as the graves are now completely covered. The uh, right, right markers before. are uh, set. What do you want to do? I was just gonna walk up to the graves, <laughs> get on my knees and my hands on on them and say in halfling un dia el alba llegará y sus almas volarán which is translated to one day dawn will break and your souls will fly again and he's going to stand up and go with the rest of the group okay you bring Yeska to the orphanage Miss Belasco opens the door and inside you see a worried Milovaj that is making his way to the door to see what's going on. And you hand Yeska over. Milovaj takes Yeska, who is crying at the sight of his friend. And that is where we're going to take our break. <laughs> so we are going to be back in 15 minutes. While we are on break, we are going to be Damn. running a giveaway. It's going to be the most lackluster giveaway in the history of giveaways. <laughs> oh, 
try to it's change the mood a little giveaway. bit here. <laughs> it's going to be I, a great giveaway. Can, as, as part of this giveaway, can I just give away all my sorrow? <laughs> <laughs> if only we're that easy. I but, too would like to give away all my sorrow. <laughs> we are going to be giving away a free copy of Spoken Magic on Roll20. Uh, if you're a follower here on Twitch, you can join the giveaway. Uh, while we're on break, type the chat command exclamation point grief. <laughs> Oh. You type that into the chat, no. and if you're a sub a subscriber, you get two entries into the giveaway. So we will be running that giveaway here shortly, and we will be right back after the break. So if you we'll become you a all. sub, you can take Irina's grief. Yeah, there you go. And you want some extra grief? Irina's got <laughs> it for you. So, anyways, hey. we're gonna start the giveaway now. It is started. Make sure to join, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. We are returning from the break. And we're going to pick a winner, which is going to be... Not us. <laughs> Ziggy! <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy strikes again! Congratulations, Ziggy. <laughs> All right, Ziggy, you are going to be getting the code later today. I will be sending it over to you. As per usual, we have this... <laughs> this give relationship. This give... Give and take. No, give and take. Thank you for take. subscribing to us. Thank You're you, Ziggy. awesome. We do appreciate it. You deserve it, honestly. Thank Absolutely. you for enjoying our pain and suffering. Yeah. Yeah. So, with that. <laughs> do we have another giveaway to announce or something? Nope. We're getting right back Fuck. into the thick of it. All right. To so. announce our new <clears throat> cheerful happy campaign. We yeah, are right. playing... Sunshines Rain and rainbows. rainbows and you're sure, playing <laughs> strawberry <Fursy>. shortcake. <laughs> the, the uh, strawberry strawberry shortcake. Short oh my god, that is <laughs> Did you just say strawberry? Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here with that shit. But all right, we are, now we to are the back, suffering. And we're gonna right, go back, back into back into the sadness zone. <laughs> we're going into a different vibe now. It is um, Johnny, quick yes. I'm, I'm gonna have to turn on the fan. I, I'm sorry. I'm You're gonna good, try to dude. do it. And you're good, dude. Just, fine. Just, you make sure that you are not dying right now. I know. You're good. We need you at peak performance. So. <gasps> I need Johansson's cold embrace right now. So. <laughs> you all drop Yeska off at the orphanage. And leaving him there, he stays with uh, Milovaj. And you begin leaving. It's getting very dark here. The sky above what usually is a overcast sky is now getting darker. And as you leave the orphanage, you see that the doors of the church are now open. You come and as you're walking down the main road, you see guards that are inside looking over Father Lucian's body. Is there anything that you would like to do in that moment? Keep walking. Keep walking. We out. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we. I, I don't think we have the emotional energy to do anything other than just continue on our path. Yeah. Yes. Also, like we don't really know slash trust the guards. Like we're not 100%. like this. We're Let kinda... them do their. Yeah, they gotta mm -hmm. figure it out over here. They're cool. I don't. I don't even technically trust Frederick. 
I don't know <laughs> what, what right. he's done. So from my right. perspective, that was a Hail Mary. So. Mm-hmm. Irina said A cap. So you all continue <laughs> going forward. Are you aimlessly walking through Valakai? What do oh. you what are you all wanting to do? We're going to the inn. We're going right. to the blue water inn. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think it that we're going time. to the inn because yeah, we don't want to get exhaustion <laughs> yeah, and fuck sure. like that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Irina is probably kinda like if he I'm wanted like, to kill me, he would have done it. <laughs> I'm at like half a health point right now. I'm just I trying have, to <laughs> trying to survive. I took yeah. Eight damage last session, which is like most of my health. So, <laughs> so you all walk down the main road after seeing this clocking that the guards are now in the church. You continue going forward towards the Blue Water Inn until you begin to see people that have come outside checking on the commotion, now have begun following a line of people towards the Baron's home. A place that you loosely know the direction in from before. Even with the nightmare of an event that has transpired, you see all of them are still smiling. You come to that intersection and you see a large group of people standing down the road. What do you all do? Good for them. <laughs> also, question, just to clarify. I I believe Irina has like a cloak kind of situation. Um, She, she has that hood up and she's just like, okay. she's covering her, her sure. face. She's, Joe yeah. Hans is, is cuddling Luna as he walks. All right. You continue walking forward. And then you see Frederick walking with Henrik. He looks towards each of you. You see Henrik is just looking directly down into the ground. And you see that they seem to be also walking towards the Burgomaster's mansion. But as he passes you, he kind of gives each of you a nod and says, It's good to see that each of you are still there. I'm sorry for... The ones that you lost. Thank you. And he continues walking, leaving you be. You come to the Blue Water Inn, where it is mostly empty. One sec. Yeah, there we go. Bring you on over onto that map for you guys. Mm. <clears throat> you come to the Blue Water Inn and you see. There's this Mark's token. And oh, Bruce and Blair. Oh. Just get rid of those on the screen. So. I'm killing them all over again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Fresh wound all over again. I need alcohol. All right. <laughs> yeah, we have a. Whole another funeral scene to do real quick. Just yeah. <laughs> so you <laughs> come into tokens. the Blue Water Inn, and the atmosphere is quiet. You see the two hunters that had been there before are once again sitting by themselves at a table. And they seem to be paying nobody mind as they continue drinking. And you see Danica who is currently whispering to Erwin, who is just inside of the kitchen. And as you come into the Blue Water Inn, they both look towards the door, and they... I don't like that music. Nope. We're just going to continue. They continue coming to the door, and they say, Danica first says, Katya, I, I, I saw you going by with coffins. Is, is everything okay? No. We... Here, sit, sit. And she takes like, you to... Yeah, I like sit down and I just... We lost our friends. Oh my goodness. Erwin, go get them some food. Hey, uh, uh, yes, of course. And he just kind of awkwardly bumbles back into the kitchen... <laughs> Joe you see Hans the, is going to take a seat, but then he's sure. going to, like, bury his head in his arms. Sure. And then Luna is going to cuddle up 
to oh. him. Yeah. So his face is even more hidden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's I'll, just going to stay um, there still. Sure. Just I'll... shivering a little bit. <laughs> crying. She takes say, a seat just next to you. Um, I'll say we are, are going to be checking out in the morning. If you could have some road supplies ready for us, that would be uh, Of course. Are, are you going to be going to the winery? That that's that is totally <laughs> okay. I I still I'm I'm sorry. I if we have if we can we'll stop by, but we have some pressing issues we need to. Of course, of course. I tackle. I'm so sorry. I know we agreed to that, but it, it is okay. I just wanted to know. Um, I I hate to be the person to do this, but uh, unfortunately. Oh yes, if, yeah. Um, and I like, I'm like, who? I, do I have the gold? I I take out my share of the sure whatever I didn't spend on the blacksmith, and I'll hand over. I just grab like a fistful of gold. Sure, we'll <laughs> like say ten. It over. We'll sure. say you give ten, and then she grabs it and she places six of them back, and she says, "This is I, well, and I'll enough." Like push it back for the supplies in the morning. Oh, okay. And she grabs the rest. And oh. goes back around the bar and leaves you all whatever you were doing. Yeah, I had plenty, so we're fine. Um, yeah, I'm not doing much. I'm just sitting. <laughs> sure. I'm well, crying. Then. But like in secret. Of course, of course. Stealth cry. I'm, yeah. Like, <laughs> pretending not check. to notice. <laughs> it's I not suck stealth. At stealth cry. <laughs> It is bad with the six. You hear you hear sobbing coming out of Johan's. We, yeah. I respectfully do not notice or acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, also, I am giving. I'm using Luna to cast a uh, warm embrace on myself. Sure. Mm. Okay. Nice. You all begin to see mist coming off of Johan's, as if the cold air from him is escaping, and for the first time a in a very long time. You begin to feel warm. It's foreign to you, in a sense. It it's been good, so, so long. Eh, it's it's been a very long time since you felt any warmth, and so I, 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 it feels it feels too nice. I, I I I drop it the moment I. It's like when you're out in the cold for too long, and then when you finally come in, then you finally realize how painful it is. Mm-hmm. Because your body starts to react in a way of like, oh, we're good. We can start releasing all of that stress. And then you just nope. feel. This is no. Ah. And so <laughs> you go back to your regular cold self. Yep. I'll be cold. Thank you. The mist then <laughs> begins to slowly dissipate. You all stay like in. The, the Johan's fridge was open. In a... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You can just see the little mist. Coming. Right. Anyway, so. The no, you're good. Uh, is there anything that you would like to do? Danica brings out food and the whatever kind of drinks she has at the moment because wine is mm-hmm. unfortunately out. Yeah, water's fine. Um, I'm just gonna pick at it for a while, sure, eat a little, and then head to bed. Okay, as as Johans is not gonna move. But the moment he feels Ka just stand up to go to the room, he's going to speak into her mind and just say, I'm glad that you survived. I just, that's it. I, I'm stand like I stop, like, I don't know, a foot away from him. And I just say, it should have been them instead. And I walk up the stairs. Irina, is there anything that you would like to do? Um, she, I imagine she kind of eats her dinner in quite a bit of silence and, sure. um, before, uh, going to bed, um, or before, like, Katya goes up, she definitely tells, um, Katya, you know, thank you for everything. And, um, also, like the same, like at the same time, also like says thank you again to 
Johans and also apologizes like thank you both I I don't know how I'll ever be able to repay you for all you've done for me and I also I I'm sorry I I did not intend to drag you into this I I I honestly I I only intended to hire you for a simple job being my protection but I'm sorry that it's all come to this and that your friends have been lost and that you have suffered at my expense I I promise I will do everything I can to carry this weight with you and I understand if at any time you want to pull out from this, but I intend to go after him. I I would have gone after him with or without you. So I'm happy to have you here. It's not your fault. This something would have happened one way or another yes whether it's me or somebody else his cruelty and his hunger for destruction it knows no bounds and it can't be satiated and that's why we will put an end to this we'll stop him we have to So, the rest of the night continues on, Johans. About an hour after everybody else goes upstairs, Johans is going to go upstairs as well. Um, about what time is it right now, would you say? That depends. It's early, right? Um, well, <clears throat> by the time that you were done with the funeral and everything, I would say, so it was about 3 p.m. when you guys got to the coffin maker shop, mm-hmm. probably about... Or, well, by the time that we started this session, I mean. um, With everything that's transpired, probably... It's probably late evening. It's probably, like, around, like, 8 or 9. That's Mm. fine. I'm going to ritual cast alarm. Okay. As you're you're coming... Sure. As you're coming out, you begin to hear... A few people walking through uh, the main road, seeming to be going home. You hear them talking. Do a perception check. Wait, uh, this I meant on our room, not outside. I know, but you go outside in order to go up the stairs to your room. Right. Uh, right. Perception? Yeah. Can I give myself advantage because Luna's with me? Yeah. 13. That's not with advantage, though. He rolled, I rolled it twice. They rolled twice. Oh, did six it? Six and 13. Oh, got it. Yeah, I see it now. <clears throat> the sixth the thir- stealth was from what I was trying right, to Right, yeah, buy. I just... Anyways. Yeah. So, with a 13... <laughs> or a bottle of your emotions. You, the people are a little far away, and you're able to overhear just bits and pieces. You hear, Particle Master. Something, something happens. Festival still happening? And they just continue going. Cool. So. I take 20 minutes to cast alarm at the uh, window to the room and on the door. Sure. And you begin I don't, putting, if they're awake, I don't say anything. Of course, yeah. Just do it. And, and then you all... Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm, I am going to use... I'm going to spend... An, I'm going to spend... Two hours learning, uh, adding a new spell to my. Remote. Sure. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. Awesome. Begin transcribing. And then once I'm done, I'm going to go to sleep. All right. <clears throat> Is anybody leaving doing watch or anything like that? I'm going to try, but I think I'll just pass the fuck out. Sure. 
get you have three three uh watches during the night because I'll, technically you only I'll have to probably those. take the first one since sure. I'm gonna be studying. I'll okay. Be Go ahead and do a perception check. Um <clears throat> this just regular because you're focusing on your spell book. Because, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So should I do the perception check with Luna then? Uh, you're both the same. It's plus three anyways, I'm pretty sure anyways, so just go ahead and do oh, a regular Luna, perception. Luna gets a, uh, he gets advantage on perception checks that rely on hearing. Yeah, so. but you add, but you would have disadvantage because you're only looking... Oh, That's I see 21. what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It's a 21 Luna would anyway. be the one that would be oh. looking. So then, yeah, you would get a, a <coughs> advantage, but it's 21. Nothing happens. Whatever, yeah. Okay. And then whoever comes next for... Uh, I'll... Irina will take a watch as well. Okay. I'll take Irina. the last one. Irina, you wake up. You take watch. Go ahead and do your perception check. Perception. With a 12. Nothing happens. Better than my your, not one. <laughs> your watch goes without issue. And she kind of like she's she's looking out the window too as she's doing watch. She's of course. Sorry, I just turned on light mode. Oh, um, from from roll twenty. Yeah, because yeah. light mode light mode shows you what spells or rituals and which ones aren't. Mm. And dark mode, dark doesn't, mode yet? doesn't. Interesting. Yeah, oh. So I have to switch to keep track of. I roll twenty. Get on learned. it. Yeah, it's, come on. But it's, it's so blinding. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> okay, Sorry. and Katya, you take the final mean? watch. You feel a lot better than before. Uh, before, you felt extremely fatigued, groggy, as if you weren't as healthy as before because you took a lot of bites from these vampires. Your memories went back so hard to everything that you had experienced before. And finally, when you go to sleep, you are then racked with these memories once again. Tossing and turning, you don't get great sleep, but when you finally awake for your watch, you are groggy, you are drowsy, but you feel better. Mm. And even with a nine... The night goes uneventful. I feel like that's appropriate. I'm like not completely right attentive with how mm -hmm. like shitty I feel, but yep, yeah. That last half a day was just like sheer force of will of staying awake and like moving and working. Pretty much. So, as you awaken, you begin to hear. The sounds of one sec as I bring it over. Outside, begin to hear the sounds of some sort of a parade, a festival. It is jarring. To hear such a display of cheer and happiness in this town. And that is the first thing that awakens all of you. The crashing of cymbals, the cheering of people, oh, yeah. and the they marching of a band and guards going throughout the town, knocking on doors. And you soon see the streets filled with people. But Remember, everybody, we got a long rest. Oh, you do it. get a long rest. Ooh, yes. That's good. So, as you awaken to all of these sounds just outside, what would you like to do? Murder everybody. Oh, huh? well, I mean, that's definitely... But that's not what I'm going to do. So, I'm gonna what do you want? I'm going to do it manually because the button isn't working now. Sure. But <sighs> I don't have a lot to do this with. Um, I really hate this town. <sighs> Me too. You think we can get out of here without any trouble? 
I think that we are going to be forced to go to this absolutely horrendous parade or whatever it is. I need to go shopping. Johans, mm. I don't know if the shops are going to be open during this festival, but we can try, I suppose. You all begin to leave your rooms, making your preparations, until you see the messenger that Lady Walker had sent to you before. Katya, you immediately recognize him, mm -hmm. and you see him leaning there on one of the posts underneath the canopy. Sure. The roof. Yeah. And you see him just leaning there waiting, and he sees you coming down the stairs. He says... Lady Walker was expecting some sort of information that you happened to make your way to the Burgomaster and his mansion. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Some more pressing events came up. We did not have the chance to talk to him. Well, that is disappointing, but... I will share the news. Please offer our apologies and understand. Let her know that it was only under dire circumstances that we were not able to do this. Of course. He leaves his little post and begins walking away. Well... Do you think that we should still try to get the information? I... Or should what we... What do you think? <laughs> I don't know I... what, how much information we can get out of him or how useful it would be. Knife. Honestly. I don't care. I really feel like we should meet up with Rictabio or the Vistani and be on our way as fast as possible. Yes, and we need to find Esmeralda as well. Right. And that monster hunter she's with? We need to get as many people as we can who will be allied with us. Every little bit helps. Oh. oh, excuse me. Oh, goodness. Um. Where, where first, Johans? I need a jeweler's shop. Which uh, shops did you want to go to? A jeweler's shop. Jeweler's shop? Okay. And a medicine shop of some sort. And also a book shop of some sort. Maybe somewhere they sell paper. I've been looking, but it's hard to find anything. Did we? Did we? Um, weren't we? Did we go to Blinsky's yet or not yet? I can't remember if we got yeah. the toys for the children or not. And I, it's been on my mind. I, I don't think just, I was there for that one. I think we talked about it, but so much has been going on that I think that perhaps it's slip the agenda or fall into the cracks yes. as much as i as much as i want to find genevieve i don't know if spending another day in barovia is as good an idea as it sounds Gen talking about I the think... child yeah yeah gertruda gertruda I think there's going I heard to be. I a voice in my head. They told me the name is good. You got also, the you G. said Barovia, but you meant Valakai, right? Valakai. Yeah. Look, it's hey, been cool. a hard couple of days. It's been a hard couple. Yeah. Get off. In Back and off. out of game, like this has been a hard night. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... what, the, what game are you speaking of, random stranger? That just like, <laughs> <laughs> you so just see this guy like <laughs> walking away from you. <laughs> I shall we slap him with Jeff hand. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> Where shall so a jeweler shop, a medicine shop, and parchment? Oh. And I yes. would honestly. I'm going to have to stop by the blacksmith before we go. 
Blacksmith, I... I would like to do all that we can for the children as well. I... And I, I already have some... Feel terrible was, for them. I was going to drop some money for them too, before we left. As you're all talking out here, you see Danica open up the door and say, I, I saw you walking outside. I, it took a while for you to come back in. I, I, did you want breakfast? Uh, also, uh, Katya, I have mm. a travel pack thank you. ready for you. I, uh, no, thank you on breakfast. We'll be okay. But and I'll, I'll go inside and take the pack from her. Okay. I'll, it I'll is... go around to get the cart okay. and our donkey. If you sure. have something that is easy to eat on the go. Uh, yes, that Erwin had a stash of rations that we're giving to you. And of Thank course, it is, it is completely paid for with your kind large sum of money that you give oh, us. Of course. Mm, if you have yeah. some kind of breakfast, you can wrap in a bread or something. Of course, I can uh, put a, a steak like what Rictavio. Have you seen Rictavio? He... Um, I think he had some business he needed to attend to. Um, I I saw him so... run in here and grab a few things. I, I didn't go into his room, but... Yes, he's, I think... Yeah. He's he fine. Left. He's just off on he his... He left? On his way, yes. Oh. He wanted to... Um, uh, he, he performs, right? He wanted to spread his joy to I another see. town. Is he going to Kresk? Uh, possibly, I uh, we didn't get the location of I see. where well, exactly. Well, wherever he goes, um, if you do end up seeing him, just let him know that he is welcome here and we appreciated him staying here for so long. That, that is all. We will do so. Thank you for taking care of us while we were here. Of we course. Uh, do, you, do you know what you are going to do when you leave? Uh, are you going to Kresk? I know that you said that you might not go to the winery, but... Well, we have a couple things on the agenda, so... We'll figure it out. We haven't quite decided yet, but... You two should eat, and she... <laughs> she, like, <laughs> gives the sandwiches, like, puts the sandwich in Katya's hand and Johan's hand, like... <laughs> Johan's sure. not there. He wanted to get the oh, Yeah, Johan's went around. Right. <clears throat> She's I'll, holding I'll on to it Johan's. I'll take it Yeah. But... We can't work on an empty stomach. Well, if you do end up going anywhere, the winery is on the way to Kresk. Uh, you also, here, let's put you guys on the map. Yeah. Do we know where Kresk is in relation to the lake? You yeah. will in a second here. So also, for you, she's, yeah. she seems a little like weird like where are you going where are you going huh so i like well, irena I mean, is I, kind of like i think she's just a mess a merchant trying to get <laughs> back one of her biggest income yeah no i think so too but do an inside check. A, yeah Go irena's do an inside a little check. bit like more on edge than normal now sure. she's you know, yeah for sure fair. understandably so in the sides <laughs> there's a party token <laughs> yep. I'm moving a, all the all the dead ones. Boss. I'm moving all the dead ones to where uh the points that they've been talking about. So Blair is Bring on the dead. tower. <laughs> here, let's, okay. I'll That's show you guys so that even the Yeah. Here we go. We have over here. Uh I don't know if that's enough. Let's see. Let's see what you guys see. Oh, that is like way zoomed in. Not there we go. I think. Well, maybe not. I think you guys are seeing what I see. Well, there's that. Yeah, you guys are seeing what I see. But Correct. that is that is the map, and that is that. So, okay, so um, mm. see, this is the uh, down here is the winery. Oh, bro, that's so far away. This is Kresk. And then this is the tower. So, realistically, you could hit the tower on your way to either Kresk or the winery. Sure. Just letting you know, because that is a. Do we know whatever this? Do we know whatever this down here is? We could hit so it far. all. Really, we could be. Like, you could. Talk, you Kresk, could be adventurous winery. if you want. Yeah. No. Um, mm. That 
uh, as as you bring. You don't know what it is, right? Do you want to show the map to? I mean, Danica would show you if you showed the map. It's up to you guys. Sure. I'll okay. Show us like what is this thing down here? You're, I don't know why I'm Russian right now. <laughs> you also aren't here because you're grabbing the horses. Oh, yeah. that's true. I wouldn't ask but that. But as I mean, she takes a look at that and says, "I think I think that's." I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it was once a stronghold for some order of the Silver Dragon or something like that. Mm. Arkin, Arkin Volstot or something? I think that's the name of it. Do you... Nobody nobody really goes there because it seems dangerous. It sounds dangerous. Um, you... Recognize or familiar with anything else on this map, perhaps? Well, any areas of interest which could be helpful to us, which would also help us in, you know, the job which you gave to us. Of course. Um, yo, Luna's got her own lake and a river. I don't. That's cool. I don't know anything past the winery, Kresk. Those are. The only two places that I've ever really been to, other than, I mean, of course, if you go the other way, the village of Barovia, but mm. other than la. that, there is a, a Vistani camp just outside of here, but I think you guys said that you were already there. Yeah, I was going to ask where on the map the Vistani camp's at. Sure. Can you, like, put my token Like, on the it? Vistani camp in terms of the... The one we just visited with just one. visited. It is yeah, just right. out. Literally, your token is on it, Katya. Oh, okay, cool. cool, yeah. cool. Oh, it's yeah. just it's just literally just outside. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, distance is really okay. long for halflings. So that's why I'm taking so long. To of course. Yep. Yeah, we will. We will go to the winery if we can. We'll see what we can do. Again, thank you for uh, for taking care of, of us while we of were course. here. And thank you for everything that you did for the town. I've only heard rumors, but something about 20 vampires or something like that you took care of. It, it was a lot. Thank you. It, it, you're welcome. I hope, I hope your journey is safe. Thank you. I hope you're safer in this town than and you were. I hope to see you again. Of course. All of you. Of course. I hope to see you too. I'll like, take my little breakfast burrito and shuffle off. <laughs> and you come outside and Joe hunts. As you're bringing the cart around, you begin to see this group of guards approaching. Mm. Led by Frederick. This group of guards comes to you, and as the party regroups, they call out to each of you and say, uh, Visitors! Mm -hmm. Visitors to Balakai. We have been given strict orders to bring you to the festival under the Burgomaster's direct orders. You are to be celebrated. I just say, like, I just, like, sweet, merciful, and if we would rather be on our way... Frederick looks yeah. back, and the other guards kind of, like, turn their heads. Uh, they look towards Frederick. <clears throat> that would be most unwise, as the Burgomaster takes these festivals very seriously. Can... Can we at least do some chopping first? Uh, shops are closed for the day. Yeah, uh, due to the like, festival. Just like fucking shaking. <laughs> like, the Arnold so, meme where you're just like, Ar like... Yeah, exactly. I'm full on like ar double Arthur meme. Like yep. so... Guys. Well, <sighs> Johan, Johans, you'll probably need, be needing this. And she hands the breakfast sandwich burrito over to you. <laughs> I was let out like a long, deep sigh. Looks like, okay. Like... I guess I'll take the cards back. 
First thing tomorrow, we are out of here. Go ahead. Cart gets taken back around. You when all... I rejoin, I am cursing. I'm cursing out all of the guards and the burgomaster <laughs> and like everybody's minds, but like my party members' minds. Sure. But I'm but I'm using like perfect halfling, so nobody knows what I'm saying mm. unless they know halfling, and it's just I love it's it. just like. This is so Lou of obscenity. Yes. Just, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you all begin to follow these guards. And as you walk down the main road, they take the turn down where the Burgomaster's mansion is roughly where you imagine you come finally to this sad looking podium. It stands just outside. One sec, I'm opening up my notes here. It, it, it looks so sad. This is what you can, this is the best that this city can offer. This is just in everybody's mind, by the way. Right, just, right, of course. Like, <laughs> this is how they're celebrating us. They couldn't even celebrate us with a better looking podium. Like, what, what the fuck? So, you come to this large gathering just outside of a large mansion, and just in front, you see this small makeshift stage along with a rather disappointing podium atop of it. As you approach, you see what you could only imagine to be the Baron. He stands at a tall six foot five. He is very big and wears ornate armor, dark maroon, black cloak draped over. And on his right side, you see a dainty thin woman who Stare wanders about her surroundings. And it is most likely the Baron's wife. On the left side, you see a nearly seven foot tall armored man. The most noticeable things about this guy is that he is bald and he has a giant battle axe that is gripped in this large, monstrous right arm. That is one big man. What the fuck? The arm's skin is rough and blackened and claw-like hand holding the weapon to his side. Each of these individuals are walking out of the mansion and the crowd goes quiet for a moment. The Baron approaches the podium, puts his hands up and says, My dear Valakians! Oh gosh. We start this day with my deepest condolences going to those affected by the most recent events in the Arsec stockyard what I can only describe as the devil's raid the people lost will forever live in our hearts however we must not forget the reason of why we are here my dear Valakians our faithful guards have been reporting an increase in arrests due to frowning and depressing conversations that are being had throughout town. This can be the only reason for why this happened. And we must continue to stay vigilant. Sadness and terror welcome the devil to our town. Happiness and joy are the only things keeping them at bay. And for this reason alone, we are here. The greatest celebration of the year, the Festival of the Blazing Sun. We will be lifting the souls of the fallen to the Morning Lord and asking for his protection with smiles on our faces. All will be well. Dear Valakians, all will be well. You would expect a roaring applause from the people that are listening. However, the people stay relatively silent. During this rousing speech, <laughs> you see the towering guard looking through the crowd. And as you, with the guards, approach, you see he notices the party, looks at each of you, and then 
stops. And just stares. Squinting his eyes. He taps on the Baron's shoulders. And then as his hands are outreached, he looks towards you all. And then points you out and says, Friends! Valakians! Do not fret! For today, the saviors of Val Valakai are in our presence. Yes. These folks are the ones that put an end to the devil's raid. Please, come. Show yourselves to our people. And he beckons you forward. And you are forced, yet not very forced, yet <laughs> forced to make your way towards this stage. Yeah, I just go along with it, hoping it'll be over soon, and like walk up to the podium and stand where they where they put me. Yeah, Irina like, kind of reaches for Katya and, <laughs> sure. and Joel does it. As they walk over, they're kind of like, oh my god. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm to have Luna just flying around a far sure. off us, just watching. If there's like a if there's like a tall building nearby from where she can watch, she'll probably be there. There is. Actually behind the mansion you see this large watchtower. And Luna can easily perch herself at the top of that. <laughs> Crowd of people all look in your direction with smiles reaching across their face and begin moving out of your way as you make your way through the crowd. You hear every so often low cries of individuals hidden behind others. But you finally arrive to the podium. Somebody do a perception check. Everybody do a perception check. Okay. Can I do mine with advantage? Because I have, I'm going to have <laughs> Too far. Not in this case. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll do it without 17. Anyway. Perception? Yes. Okay. Nine. I will speak directly to Katya for this. You notice that the guard that is blonde or bald, not blonde, bald, Maybe is looking was. directly at you and just staring. Mm -hmm. And he's like just. It. And that's it. I just give him a, just give him a little smile. <sighs> I thought my internet just crashed again. <laughs> you guys, because I was quiet. frozen. <laughs> yeah. So. He just stares, and you give him a smile, and <laughs> and goes back to whatever Do I know, he was doing. Have I seen this guy before anywhere? Do I know him? Have I seen him around town at all? Do a hmm. Roll a d twenty. I don't want to tell you what skill. I just want to. I just want you to roll a d twenty. Let me know. Seven. No. All right. Even with bonuses, no. Sure. That's fine. Uh, so well, I just come, come up there, I like look at him, address him, and then I'm just waiting for the next thing to happen. As you're as you're walking up to the podium, Frederick kind of whispers away from the other guards that are with him. Remember to smile. This is this is a big moment. You do not yeah, I'm, want I'm giving to frown. Like a little lips yep. tight closed. Sure. A little, mm. Yep. So you come awkwardly to the stage and the Baron welcome you onto it. You hear with each step it's <laughs> like this podium is or this stage is about to break with your weight hello everybody for uh the radar party thank you joe venom uh, hi everybody hey, welcome uh, raiders we're having a party. The raid. <laughs> you come to the stage There's and he festival. has his hands still out and he brings to reference each of you to his right and he says the saviors of valakai are here to protect us happiness will reign all will be well you awkward claps from the from the crowd <clears throat> now let us begin our celebration in the town square we will be with you shortly after speaking with our saviors of Alakai. please have fun smile bring happiness to Valakai. All will be well. And again, awkward claps and the crowds finally <laughs> begin to one by one leave the crowd. 
and the Baron turns to each of you. <clears throat> Would you mind joining us for breakfast? We were I in like the middle of cooking around. and then this happened. I just like look over at the mob of guards behind us and I'm like, why yes, <laughs> that would be lovely. Wonderful. I'm going I will to make sure that the servants make enough for each of you. And why, thank, thank you. you for everything that you have done for Valakai. Your good deeds have not gone unnoticed. I'll give a little <laughs> bow. I'll give him and ah, ha one just with happy manners. to help. And he takes a small bow. And we are she just happy high, to help kind of whatever yeah. we need. Yeah. I'll like keep him. Sure. You no, know, talk behind me. Whatever. Do a stealth check, Johans. <laughs> just, <laughs> just in general. Okay. <laughs> I'm very good at this. 18. 18. Yes! He seems to just. He <laughs> seems to think that you're just a child. He's looking to the two of them and he's completely ignoring you. And yes. he looks to you, Katya, what, what were you about to say? Oh, I was just right saying, whatever door. whatever we can do to help the safety of the people. Yes, it's the right thing to do. If you can help someone, then you should always lend a hand. Of course. Wonderful. I know that I'm going to like our relationship. You are wonderful people. Here, come, come. And he looks back and you see there's a few guards just outside of the door. And he brings his hand up, they open the door, and out comes the servant that looks, and he says, Make sure that there is enough for... <laughs> two and a half people. Your child is most likely going to eat as well, I'm, I'm sure. Of, of course, I don't address the child Wonderful. remark at all. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Make sure that there is enough food for all of our guests to eat. Please, come. Come. I... No resistance... Yeah. Along with it. yeah, we, we yeah, we we follow along. Yeah. Sure. So, I guess we're having second breakfast. <sighs> so you guys so didn't eat breakfast. No, we did. We eat the yeah. sandwiches. Like oh, you guys were eating. The, got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Nope. My sandwich is in my pocket. Oh, yeah, I'll just right, kind of right, right. like tuck it, I guess, into a into so, an inside Irina pocket. definitely ate her. She was just like, "Oh yeah, we can't be doing this yeah, on yeah, yeah, empty yeah. stomach." <laughs> so you were brought into this mansion. You see that the mansion outside is plastered stone that shows many scars where plaster has fallen away from age and neglect. Drapes cover each and every window, including a large arched opening above the mansion's double entrance doors. Door is then opened in front of you, and the Baron enters, then his wife, and then the large guard. As you enter, you see this entrance hall is adorned with framed portraits, and this grand hall features a wide staircase to your right, with sculpted railings to the second floor. A long carpeted hall attached to a foyer stretches almost the length of the mansion, and several doors leading away from it, including one at the very far end of it. And on the sides of the hall, you see bundles of twigs are heaped against the walls. You were then ushered to the direct left, where the Baron enters into a large dining area where you see a chandelier of wrought iron fitted with wax candles hanging above a polished wooden dining table. Around the tables are eight comfortable high back chairs, and a servant ushers you to each of your seats around the table. As the Baron takes his seat at the edge of the table, the hulking guard kneels just next to him and whispers something, and the Baron says, Oh, <laughs> why, yes, of course. Go ahead and, and do that. I, I am curious to see what happens. The guard leaves, and the Baron continues looking toward you. Ah, Isaac is going to grab something, but please take a seat. You are our most uh, honored guests today. As I'm climbing onto my seat, I want to pocket Luna. Since I don't have a, lim a distant limit for that, just sure. Yeah. I um, I don't think we got um your names and oh, uh, uh, we have Where are my manners? I am Baron Vargas Valakovic, and this, as he references all the way across the table, <laughs> you see the dainty woman that is just sitting there staring. 
This is Lady Lydia Petrovna. And you are? Can I make a perception check on the lady? Sure, go ahead. Is she, is she, is, I'm trying to figure out if she's here. Are the sure. lights on? Like, no, yeah, nobody at home. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take much to see, like, her staring is spacey. For okay, sure. So she's just ditzy, so to speak. Like, just, as right, far as you can tell. As far as you can tell. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. My name is Katya. Katya. And this I was wondering. My my apologies for my rude manners. And this I'll like oh. gesture over. This is Johans. Hello, yeah. Johans. Shit, what is Irina's last name again? I'm Irina Koliana. Irina Koliana. Koliana. I recognize that last name. Where are you from? I am from Barovia. Oh. Ah, that is what it is. How is the old burgomaster there? My father has passed. Oh, I am so sorry to hear that. My wife's father just passed last night. We uh, discovered him in the church. Oh my gosh. Wait. That's terrible. Another, my... another dead from the terrible devil raids. Yes. I'm so he, sorry for your losses. He oh, took he please. took my brother from us as well last night. Let us not focus on such sad and depressing conversation. Um as he says that I'm gonna speak into her mind. Okay. And I'm just gonna say I am terribly sorry for your loss. But since I'm I'm just using I'm tell nobody knows that I, I'm just Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. And to the wife? Make, yeah, to the <laughs> wife. Okay. She just like, for a split second, it looks like she's there. And then she looks. And then quickly her gaze goes back. You see a single tear that begins coming down her cheek. And she quickly... The Baron... Begins talking again. <clears throat> well, it is finally... It is nice to finally meet each of you. Uh, there has been nice to meet some you hubbub too. about the orphanage, and Bluto was sent to me earlier uh, yesterday about his crimes against a Vistani child. Uh, Bluto has been sentenced to ten years in solitary confinement for what he has done, so do not worry. He has taken very... Very good punishment for what he did. It is unspeakable. That, that is good to hear that you take his crime very seriously. Food begins to come around the dinner table. But what happened in the stockyard yesterday? I heard something of 20 vampires that you had slain and a giant demon that were killing my people. Is, is this true? Um, mostly, yes. We went in there to ask some questions. Uh, what was the coffin guy's name again? One Henrik Vandervoort. Henrik, yeah. So we we were talking to Henrik when we learned that there were... Ah, yes, Henrik. I put him in jail. Uh, you see, he was... Jail? Oh, yes, of course. He was frowning and too scared. It wasn't... Ah. It, wasn't it wasn't good for, you know... Morale around here. So. Sure. In he will be his, questioned later about in his, his defense. Six vampires were living in his house and tormenting him. And when we found out about them, the the situation escalated into the raid that you heard about yesterday. Yes, but you must understand that frowning and being scared. These are unforgivable in Velikai. Regardless of where they come from. I smile a little more. <laughs> Un understood. Well, so, that's... what brought you to Valakai in the first place? I've only heard that you were here for a small amount of time. Well, yeah. um, I had heard that Valakai was a very safe place, and with mm. my father the passing... 
Oh yes, very safe. Mm. It is very mm-hmm. incredibly safe here. Of it's course. Uh, admirable, actually. Yes. Well, and, thank you. Um, <laughs> we try very hard to keep it that way. My brother wanted me to come here to stay in a very safe Your brother. place. Oh, right. I apologize. Yes. Um, so, um, here we are in this safe place. Mm. Couldn't be any safer. No. Have you enjoyed your stay here? Oh, very much. It's a very, very pleasant town. Very nice people. Mm. Apart from, you know, the devil's raid, but mm, now that that's... Course. But now, very nice, very pleasant. Wonderful. Wonderful. This this is great news. I always wonder. I know that we have different customs here and uh, compared to the village and, of course, Kresk. But I like to say that this is the best home in all of Barovia. The best. Mm. Why, um... What do you think that, um... I mean, between here and Kresk, what do you think is uh, better? Oh. No, we don't know much about Kresk. Any information well, that would be... Not to toot my own horn or anything, but... Valakai is far superior to Kresk. It is not even a question. <laughs> but I understand if you haven't been to Kresk, it... It is a small little town with a small little burgomaster. <laughs> It is nothing compared to Valakai and what I've been able to accomplish here. We remind me one more time what it sure. exactly it was uh, Madame Wachter wanted to learn about this guy. She wanted to get dirt on this guy, basically. Okay. That was that was the goal was to get dirt. Got it. Yes. Okay. I couldn't remember what specifically it was. Got right. it. Okay. Yep. Well, well, this conversation is happening. Johans is not paying attention at all. Sure. <laughs> he is just yep. smiling and nodding. Mm-hmm. And he's talking to the lady. Okay. What are you saying he's, to the lady? He's going to whisper. First of all, he's going to be like... In in her mind, right? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> first, he's going to say... Don't worry. We won't get you in any trouble. I should say this in Johan's voice. Don't worry. I won't get you in any trouble. While you're eating, use your utensils as a signal. Are you in danger? (laughs) Do persuasion check. Okie dokie. Persuasion? Uh, I just gotta re-roll. I'm gonna use it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, just one better. So, first roll was a seven. Re-roll yeah. done. That was an eight. No response from her. It is the thousand-yard stare with the very dainty smile. That's fair. I'm gonna keep smiling, and then I'm gonna say... Sure. We lost someone last night. And uh, I think I can help you if you need help. Um, no response. Okay. So I'll what, wait a little oh, bit sorry. longer and then do something else. Sure. So what are your plans um, for Valakai. It's uh, it's so wonderful here. How can you make it even better, right? Well, if you haven't noticed, uh, the festivals in Valakai are (laughs) the best. We do it every single week. We make sure that everybody is present so that we have the maximum amount of happiness. Because, as I said, happiness is what keeps the devil away. So... (laughs) Of course. Very, uh, very festive. And This is going to be the best, greatest celebration of the year. Sorry about that. You're good. The celebration, the 
festival of the blazing sun. It is going to be by far the best. And hello everybody from Danny's stream. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome Raiders. <laughs> so what are... Um, and forgive me for asking, I know we should keep things very happy, but I... Well, what will happen to the church? I, I'm sure you had some devout people here, so... Will someone be... Taking the place of as the father there, or? Oh, I I don't know about that. There really isn't very many people that are as close to the Morning Lord as Father Lucian was. It would be difficult to find any replacement for him. I see. That's unfortunate. However, we will make sure that whoever replaces him is well suited. Very happy man. He was. Uh, so, um, you know, I had a really good idea. All of this talk about the uh, happy and smiling to keep uh, the devil away, and um, of course, maybe you could uh, import some of that knowledge on us, and we could spread it to the other towns, and perhaps. If we were to spread this insight to others, uh, imagine if all of the towns all across Barovia were smiling and happy, then maybe the devil would just disappear completely, you know? Do a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> Not okay. bad. Ooh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. You see him spark with life as he... That is a wonderful idea. You know, and he looks over to Lady Petrovna and says, You know who would be perfect for that? Victor. He's always up in his room, always doing whatever he does. I don't even understand it, but we should have him come with you. And he should take over Presk's burgomaster's duties. I mean, if Victor becomes the burgomaster for Kresk, that's just another great leader. That is a great idea. I think that we should totally do that tomorrow, after this celebration. Because you are our most honored guests. Of course. You must, uh... you must see what we do with the town. It is beautiful. Yeah, and who is this Victor? I don't believe we've oh, met them, I, so... Jarzinka, can you go check and see if uh, Victor is in his room? And you see the, the female servant right away. And she leaves. And as she's leaving, it's kind of like a they the, uh, the large guard that comes back, Isaac is what the burgomaster called him, comes in at the same time and they kind of have this like uh, <laughs> Dancing. Awkward. <laughs> the servant leaves and Isaac comes into the dining room and you see in his monstrous hand he holds a small doll. Any of you can do a perception check. Why does this strange man have a doll? <laughs> uh, 17. I've rolled three sixes on perception. Ah, the devil's number. Ah. Um, like, yeah. like we can I'm all gonna... roll it, or actually, no. I would or say, you Irina, take... you wouldn't really see it. Yeah, gotcha. I, my she's you're, not very you're perceptive. looking the other way. Well, you're looking yeah. away, anyways. Yeah. <sighs> Katya, mm -hmm. in his hand, you see the hair of this doll is night black and it wears the exact same armor as you even holding a shield in her hand Isaac holds this doll behind his back with an emotionless face and stands near the door silently looking towards the Baron who the Baron 
seeing him enter, says, Please, come, join I us, like Isaac. You're welcome to the table. And Isaac quickly makes his way over to the seat just across from you. And then I he like puts this. Notice that, and like my eyes go wide, and I just like look away and like try not to freak out. I guess. About sure. What the hell? That he sits is. down and he says, <clears throat> "Um, this and the Baron, like he's like awkwardly trying to get something out, <laughs> and the Baron puts a hand on him. Patia, it was right." Yes. What is your story? Where are you from, Katya? <laughs> Johans is gonna just poke into Katya's mind. <laughs> Lie. And poke back out. I... I... Are you okay um... there? I was only asking where you were from. No harm in answering. I, oh, I like just, turtles. just, you know, a little farming village a ways west. He looks over to Isaac. Isaac just, like, kind of shrugs. And your parents? Where were they from? They're born and raised there. Have you ever been to Valakai? Not before coming here this trip, no. Interesting, because you share the same dialect as the people here. You don't find this odd that you've never been here before? Pretty common accent around this country, I think. <laughs> the captain of the guard, Isaac. Kind of sits forward. He says, Isaac believes you to be his long lost sister. Does this ring true to you by any means? Uh, as he far as I am aware, I was an only child. <laughs> he hands the doll to you, like without saying anything else. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I take I, I have, I've had dreams of you. I am. Um, you are my lost sister. Ever since I lost you and mother, I I had Blinsky making toys similar to what I had been seeing in my dreams, but uh, in the most recent days, my dreams have become more and more uh, vivid, and this one is the one that he made two days ago. Uh-huh. Are you... I've been in town a few days. Are you sure that he didn't just see me in the street? Yeah. Or... This isn't the only one. I can go grab others. And he, oh, like, no, almost... Oh, okay. <laughs> um... Baron, Baron, like, grabs him and he says, It's okay, Isaac. Oh, oh, it looks okay. to be that this is a perfect match here. It is. Which is very, very shocking. Welcome um, to the family. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh huh. Well, well, Katya, this, uh, if this is all true, you have a very big, handsome brother. What a... Oh, do not this... mince your words, Irina. Isaac is fucking ugly, but he knows that. Isn't that right? <laughs> Isaac just, like, kind of looks over and he... Yes, well, sir. There's no need to um, be... Well, so I, I think... There's beauty in all walks of life. So. I don't think uh, sure, that was pretty rude. I... Look at him! <laughs> There's not an inch of beauty on this one, and he taps on his monster arm. Like, literally monster weird. arm. It looks like the dude from Soul Calibur that, like, has that big-ass fucking arm. Yeah, Nightmare. That's exactly what it looks like. Okay, so that's, that's a real so fucked up arm. Mm -hmm. And inside, he had this small doll. I... That's I so just... I don't mean to be rude or say that I'm not calling you a liar or anything but this just doesn't make sense to me. I don't I have a brother. I've never been here before. I I, I don't know exactly how it, it <clears throat> hold that back. I, I don't know exactly how there it, is. it happened but I know it to be true. 
How else would I know that you are my sister? How else would I know that you look like this and have dreams of you? How else? And Baron... Ah, take you, it easy. We're scaring her, obviously. <laughs> you can see you that sure? she's not even smiling anymore. <laughs> and he looks at you. Sorry. It's just a lot to take in. I like try to smile. Of course it is. I it. understand. Listen, hey. listen. Do you also I have a long lost brother? Uh. I am stuffed. <laughs> and, of course, compliments to the chef. I bid each of you farewell, but I am going to go upstairs and change into my festival clothes. Is it? Feel wonderful. free to catch up with your sister, and I will see you all soon. All will be well. And you hear, <laughs> as his chair backs up, he stands, <laughs> and he makes his way out of the room. And you are now left with Lady Petrovna. And Isaac. And Isaac, of course. Um, so the festival and, um, is this the first festival of the Blazing Suns which has happened here in Valakai? Uh, this is, this is the first of uh, Blazing Sun, of course. Uh, there is multiple uh, different festivals that we have each week, um. So, uh, you said you lost your mother and the sister? Yeah, and my father. I don't know who he is. Um, but so, just like I have dreams at the doll. every so often of my mother. Oh, what, what does your mother look like? in times... <laughs> and the reference is over to Katya. Katya's your mom? Well, no, no, I am. <laughs> it is just that with Katya being a woman, she has very S similar, similar features? features. So I, does Irina look at your mom? I She's a woman too. don't know my don't, mother, Johans. I, I don't know. I believe, don't worry, it's okay, Johans. I get what he's saying. I just... I'm sorry if I offended any of you. I didn't mean to. No, you're... I... It's just what you're saying doesn't make sense with what I've known my life. I never knew of a brother. I've never been to Valakai. I... Wait, Isaac, are you originally from Valakai? I... I don't... No, I was... <sighs> I only remember growing up in the orphanage here. Oh, I see. I don't know how I got here. But was but... your sister with you in the orphanage? No. Okay, so before the orphanage, you just remember your sister, but not where Before, it... I don't remember anything before the orphanage. I just... Oh. I've had always had dreams of... Someone Katya. that grew I... at the same rate as me, and it only became cl more clear within the last week or so. I see. It could be that you were the one who was long lost and taken away from our family, but I never heard anything about this. I'm sorry, I don't know. It is I okay. Guess, I guess it could be true, but... You don't need to know anything. I uh, I just, I hope that now that I've finally found you, that I, maybe you would allow me to. Uh, at the very least, I suppose we could get to know each other a little better. <laughs> This is wonderful, and he's like slams his monstrous hand down, and the whole table just whoosh, all of the things. And you see, Lady Petrovna, nothing, nothing, like not even a jolt, just continues to look. <laughs> this is wonderful. <sighs> if you would like, I can show you the other dolls that I had made. Okay. Yes. <sighs> come, come. 
All right. And as you all finish up your breakfast, following Isaac upstairs, we're going to end tonight's session <laughs> with a interesting reveal. That's so different. <laughs> so caught you dolls. <laughs> with that being said, thank you everybody that joined us tonight. Thank you both Danny and Joe Venom for the raids to our our stream. Oh. Um if you enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing. Um we play every Monday ish for the <laughs> most part. Uh we're gonna be playing next week, so join us at 7 30. Um if you're watching the recording of the episode, thank you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, leave us a review and help with the algorithm and all of that stuff and give us five stars. If you're on Spotify, uh, make sure to follow us on all of our social media. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to be in the chat and the episode description. Join our discord. We would love to hear <laughs> everything from you. We have our own Ravenloft Misfits discord channel so that you can talk about all spoilers that you would like to get out of your system. And yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. Be sure to level up. See you all next oh, time. And raid. Bye -bye. We're going to raid. Bye. And raid. All right, bye, bye, everybody. Stick around for the raid. <laughs>